In the first chapter of 2 Samuel, David learns that King Saul and his son Jonathan have been killed in battle. Now keep in mind that King Saul had tried numerous times to kill David. He had put out a contract to assassinate David because of his military success and his great popularity. But in spite of Saul's hatred and jealousy of David, David is devastated at the news. The news came from a battle-weary Amalekite who had escaped King Saul's camp. In verse 4, he tells David, Our entire army fled from the battle. Many of the men are dead, and Saul and his son Jonathan are also dead. In response, David and his men tore their clothes in sorrow when they heard the news. Verse 11, they mourned and wept and fasted all day for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the Lord's army, and for the nation of Israel, because they had died by the sword that day. And then, instead of celebrating King Saul's death, David chose his great love for Saul and Jonathan by composing a funeral song that honored them to be passed down to future generations. Once again, David demonstrates why he was called a man after God's own heart by reaching beyond his personal experience and pain to honor the memory of the Lord's anointed king. Listen to the heart of Israel's future king as he wrote these words. Your pride and joy, O Israel, lies dead on the hills. Oh, how the mighty heroes have fallen. Don't announce the news in Gath. Don't proclaim it in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice and the pagans will laugh in triumph. The bow of Jonathan was powerful, and the sword of Saul did its mighty work. They shed the blood of their enemies and pierced the bodies of mighty heroes. How beloved and gracious were Saul and Jonathan. They were together in life and death. They were swifter than eagles, stronger than lions. How I weep for you, my brother Jonathan. Oh, how much I loved you. Oh, how the mighty heroes have fallen. Stripped of their weapons, they lie dead.